back happy hookers and welcome to day six of 12 days of coasters congratulations if you've made it this far and you've managed to make five fantastic crochet crochets five fantastic crochet coasters ready for your handmade christmas ready for all your cups and all your drinks i appreciate you're probably only going to have six in need um for your your six guests over christmas certainly for us and um, we've got a small window um during quarantine where we can have six people in the house together friends and family however 12 coasters i mean lots of different rooms you're going to need lots of different coasters aren't you plus they make fantastic um you know um plant pot stands and um, candles and various things so today is a very traditional square coaster and it's made using the suzette stitch this is a lovely textured pattern and is used is used is made using two very basic stitches believe it or not the single crochet and the double crochet now i'm going to continue my love of sheepy soft fun dk with a 4.5 hook like I say, you can use any hook or size combo you would like. Um, however, please be aware it will end up sort of smaller or larger depending. Um, I know a lot of people use um, a double knit with a four. I just prefer a 4.5 because it stops me from crocheting too tight. It helps keep my tension um, nice and even. I'm using a peacock blue and as always very excited about the easy start from the centre if you've never used sheepy soft fun it definitely um, is a very enjoyable experience if you're like me and you've got cats you don't want your ball rolling about the floor if you're sat in your lounge because it will get eaten and you will end up crocheting a, a rather soggy piece of yarn which isn't always very pleasant certainly if you're planning on gifting it here's this lovely coaster by the way it is it does have a little bit of um my cats my cats love lovely saliva so let's start with a slip knot and you're going to crochet an even number of stitches and for the crochet coaster I have made I used 18 so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I've just realized I've still got a little bit of felt tip pen on my finger. Um, this is a huge giveaway. <laughs> I'm just trying to wipe it off to the fact that I filmed days four, five and six all on the same day. And if you hadn't worked that out yet, please don't think that I haven't washed my finger, <laughs> um, you know, in a week. There we go, it's gone now. No one will ever know. So we've got our 18 stitches and that's because the Suzette stitch calls for a um, an odd number of stitches to be worked. So we're going to, oh, Moomin is here to spoil the video already. Darling, people don't want to see your tail. They need to eat everything and they want to get on with crocheting coasters. Let's just pop you over here, out the way. You can join in the next vlog, okay? We're going to be doing a podcast as we get close to Christmas and Moomin will be back in full force, don't worry. Maybe I could crochet her a cute little collar. Pop a comment down below if you'd like me to enforce some ghastly crochet pet wear for Moomin. So skipping the first chain as always, so that is this one, um, not the loop that is around the hook but the one after, you're going to place a single crochet, so yarn, um, insert, yarn over, pull back through, yarn over pull through two and you're also going to place a double crochet into the exact same space so yarn over um, but this time you're going to pull through two and pull through two now if you're new brand brand new to crocheting i would definitely recommend checking out the videos above how to single crochet how to double crochet and then coming back here um, because this isn't designed to be you know your very first intro into crochet it is um you know it is beginner but it does require some basic knowledge of stitches. So skipping the next stitch, you're going to do exactly the same into the next one along. You're going to place a single crochet and then a double crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way until you've got two chains left. So a single and a double, the cat is back. Please don't eat my yarn because I'm right in the middle of a stitch. A single 
Now she's cleaning her paw. That sounds lovely for all of you. A single and a double. Another single. It will curl up, as mine is. It's sort of getting in the way. There we go. And a double. Okay, skipping. A single and a double. I've got a tail, I think, in camera. A single and a double. A single and a double. She decided she's going to stay there. That is my cat. Let's move this ball of yarn over here so she doesn't decide to eat it. So you should have two chains left. If you don't, now's the time to panic. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> you should have two chains left. Now you're going to place in that last chain, you're going to skip. The cat has decided she's going to sit. Shall we let you just, I mean, come on guys, look at what I have to deal with. Hello. Boo boo. There we go. I mean, how could I just... You're going to stay there, are you, while we continue? I'll just sort of move out of the way. She probably will try and chew. Yes, yeah, she's now trying to chew this. You chew that over there while we leave you half in shot while we continue with this coaster. So you're going to skip, and then you're going to place one single crochet in the end. So you're always going to end the row with a skip and a single. You're not going to be placing the, the two stitches in. You're just going to place in the single. Every row will end with a chain one turn and you will ignore the chain one. No, I'm going to have to pause and get rid of you if you're going to be like this, Moomin. You're then, in that single that you just created for your very last stitch, is where you're going to place your single crochet and your double crochet. Okay? And then you're going to continue placing a single crochet and a double crochet in the places where you had a single. Now, bear with me, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to work that out. These, if you stretch it, will have made little sections. Can you see? Here's a section, here's a section, here's a section. So you'll see a bit more of a gap here where the stitch goes. You won't see a gap so much over the double because can you see there's a lot of stitch going on there but here you will very easily they also will be smaller so can you see well not that much smaller but my singles are slightly smaller v's with my than my doubles the other technique you could use is simply to realize that you're going to be skipping so you're going to be skipping your double and you're going to be going into your single so you're going to place a single crochet and a double crochet into that space. Can you see, I'm gonna pull it apart, skip, placing it here, which I can see a slightly larger stitch and a slightly smaller stitch. But you will start to realize, okay, each of these little tiny sections, excuse me, I've got a really itchy nose. Oh, it'd be great if I sneezed on camera as well. The cats, the sneezes, day six is definitely being plagued by interruptions. So let's get, get going. So single, double. Skipping into that place there where the single was, a single and a double. I've now run out of yarn. Just get a little bit more. Without to move that away from you. Yep can play with that. So a single and a double, a single and a double. I think my cat's about to eat the label. I'm sure she'll survive. A single and a double. No, I've told you we're going to have to turn the camera off and you're going to go away. So we can see here quite easily, we definitely know where we're going here, a single and a double. However, the first row is always prone to this sort of curving around the side. Don't worry, all we need to think about is this larger stitch here, that was our double. This smaller stitch, which has decided to just, you know, 
take a little slide down the side, is our single. So as long as we make sure we can place into that stitch, she says, there you go. All you need to make sure is that you put a single in. That might feel a little bit like, oh, are you sure? Pull it to shape and you'll see that it's absolutely fine. Look, can you see? It looks like a rectangle. It's not sloping in or veering off and we're absolutely fine. So we're going to yarn over. I'm going to turn our work. And we're going to repeat exactly the same row and I'm going to crochet along with you as we did before. Skipping our chain and into that single crochet, the last one of the round, the row. It's strange, it keeps saying row and round because I'm filming circular as well as rows. We're going to place a single focus and a double. Okay. You're then going to skip going into the place where the single was from the previous row. Can we see? Larger stitch double, no. Smaller stitch single, and actually it's where the kind of gaps are between those sections of stitches. So single, double, sing. This, we're gonna have to pause now. Madam, your time on camera is definitely over. Single, double, I managed to distract her with her own piece of yarn. Single, double, single, double, need a little bit more. Yarn. I'm going to put the ball on my lap. It's probably a good idea. Okay, we're nearly at the end. Single, double, single, double, single, double. And like I said, the last one, which now hasn't slipped too far down. Can you see it's, it's angled a little bit, but it's not all the way around the side. You've got your double here, your single here. We're going to pop into that last stitch. Can you see that there? Last stitch, one single crochet, like so. And you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. So you're going to repeat this until you have 15 rows, okay? Now, that's because for me, 15 rows, hello, hello darling, you've got my rings. I've got very sharp nails, I'll have to cut them later. 15 rows gives me a perfect square. If when you get to 15, and, and you can tell by, you know, as you're crocheting, you just keep folding it corner to corner and checking. So I'm going to place a snapshot or a, a screenshot here now for you to screenshot. Screenshot this, and this is the um, this is the row that you need to keep repeating. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a screenshot of that, and then when you get to 15 rows or a square, we're going to join back up, ready to um, create our edging. I'm also going to pop in a timestamp of um, the beginning of a row. So if you want to hop back to that chapter and just keep working along with the row in case you're not familiar with it, that's absolutely fine too. Um, and then we'll get back to the end, like I said, we'll get back to the end, we'll get to the end and we'll place the edging. And by this point, this little madam will have hopefully gone for a sleep and we can continue row, row six, day six without too much interruptions. So once you've completed your 15 rows, it's time to edge. And the way I like to begin the edging is actually to chain one and turn around and begin the edging along the top row. Now you're going to be aiming for 15 single crochets, providing you've done um, your 15 rows, is um, 15 single crochets along the sides with three in the corners. So if we go back into that first single crochet with one, and I'll probably pop two in, 
for now and then we'll go along the top with our single crochet so one two three four five six and it really doesn't matter if you've got haven't got the right amount because there is no right amount you just want to make sure you've got enough so that it isn't too few and it will maybe start to pull your work and too many um, it will start to sort of stretch your work and, and make your work bulge so if I just take a look at how many I'd managed after I'd popped two in the first one so I had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so I've managed to get fifteen and then here in this last single crochet is where I'm going to place three to go around the corner. So edging aside can be notoriously hard and it really just comes down to the type of stitch you've done. And what you'll see if we take a look at the anatomy is you'll see a series of holes. You'll see a bigger hole followed by potentially a much smaller hole. Okay, because what you've got there is you've got the way that the rows have ended, whether you've been coming along here and going back down, or whether you've been coming along here and going that way. So what I'm going to suggest you do is place a stitch, I'm not quite getting my hook out, a stitch into the larger hole here and a stitch straight after into the smaller hole so larger hole smaller hole larger hole smaller hole pull that was a little bit tongue twister so i'm going to pull this back around i'm going to place into this larger one here one stitch around the corner and then one into the smaller one and then one into the larger one and then one into the smaller one and one into the larger one and just keep going until you get down to the bottom. Now, it's possible that there will be 15. I'm just trying to recall. Um, I think I managed to get 15 in mine, which worked quite nicely. Um, if you've got 14, if you've got 16, I wouldn't sweat it. Like I say, just make sure when you lay it down that it's starting to look. So I've got my larger one. I'm going to place one more in my smaller one at the end there and take a look. And as you can see, that looks pretty okay. That looks pretty okay. The three in the corner, the three in the corner is really important because it's going to prevent, um, you know, it's going to really square that off. And then if we take a look, so we had three in the corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Actually, there's only 14 down the side, but I'm okay with that. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to actually place three into this next stitch here. So I'm going to go one, two, three. That's going to very nicely bring me around the corner. Now this is the bottom. This is where I chained. And again, what I would suggest you do is think of it as larger holes followed by smaller holes. And the smaller hole is very hard because it's only just determined by one tiny little part of the stitch, can you see? So there's a larger hole, there's the smaller one next to it. So I'm going to be placing one into the smaller which is here and then one into the larger which is here. Okay so that was two so three, four, I'm going to count as I go along, five, six, Seven, some more yarn, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, fifteen. I'm happy with that. Fifteen has taken me up to the corner here where we originally started. We've got quite a large gap there. I'm going to suggest that is the place where we put our three single crochets. So one, two, 
feel free to crochet around your tail if it's causing you some issues so two three and that's nicely can we say bought the corner around ready for the edge so the same as we did before with the edge think of it as one larger hole which I can see here followed by a smaller tiny can you see a smaller hole there okay so larger and all you want to make sure is well there's my next larger my next smaller must be the only place I can get my crochet hook in there so let's count just out of intrigue one two three we've got four we managed to get four in there so five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, and because can you remember at the beginning we only placed two, I'm going to place one more in here and then I'm going to slip stitch to join and that's going to be my last corner there. Now you may prefer to then go around with another row of single crochet to give it a little bit more of an extra edge. If you do that, I'll place one single crochet in every stitch and then when you get to that corner, I'll place three in the, in the very centre one. If you don't, what you're going to find is it's going to try and curl up because it doesn't have enough stitches to get around a corner. Um, so you will need to make sure again that in those very corners you're putting another three. Other than that, it's a simple case of fastening off, weaving your ends in, um, give it a spritz with um, a water spray or a steamer, um, and there you have your lovely Suzette Stitch Square Coaster for day six. Um, if you've enjoyed 12 Days of Coasters so far and you're looking forward to the next six, then please obviously give it a thumbs up, tells everybody that you like the video uh, and it pops it in front of lots of new um, viewers that may also love it. Um, you can hit the notification bell if you would like to know when the next video comes up, but it does come out every two days. Happy hooking and I'll see you soon. Bye!